let's take a little uh, let's take a little break. Let's have a little diversion now, and talk about this guy, Bor Borgimos, the model that I bought uh, yesterday, the other day, the other day. Uh, and this is a Wiz Kids. This is a Wiz Kids model. It's not Games Workshop. And. Uh, last night, I was just sort of taking a look, observing this model, trying to see, maybe think about the color scheme that I wanted to do for him. And uh, yeah, about the color scheme. So, hmm, do I have the box here? Sorry, scratching. Here's the here's the packaging. Okay. There's a quick little look at at the character and the suggested official paint scheme for him. Kind of like a giant ogre with a fiery beard, and um, in the magic card, because I looked into the magic cards for this guy, the artwork, it is fairly representative of, of how he looks in the magic card. I think they've made two cards for this guy, but the one that I had seen mostly looked more or less like you see here and, and in that suggested paint scheme. Uh, and as well, I was looking at some paint schemes, some paint jobs for this model, just on Google, seeing what like other people have have made for this model. And I kind of ended up thinking that I'm not going to be painting this guy like Borborgimos, uh, like the recommended official paint scheme. I guess I guess I'm kind of like a. Hmm, a rebel <laughs> in some respects uh much like this model here which uh, i've i've settled on a paint scheme and we're going to start painting this guy very soon uh not today but uh very soon i've i've completed uh, some some scratches on this guy and some battle damage which i was doing before and, and we'll continue to do some more off stream and then we'll get to painting him but anyways yeah so that's going to be a, a different color scheme and this guy as well i'll be coloring a little differently a lot very differently from the uh, from the official paint scheme. Uh, I kind of settled on the idea that I want to paint this guy like a frost giant. So in D and D, there is a a type of giant in their in their monster bestiary in their monster manual called a frost giant. And uh, without knowing too much of the lore, and maybe someone uh, you know later in the comment section uh, when I throw this up on YouTube or whatever someone can like uh, inform me a bit more about this but it seems like uh, frost giants in Dungeons and Dragons are a bit more evolved a bit more civilized and sophisticated compared to other giants that you see in D&D &D or in Warhammer for that matter or other other kinds of fantasy worlds it's uh, if you take if you take like Warhammer for example a lot of the a lot of the, the giants in 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 that fiction, they kind of look like giant savages with fat bellies, and they wield big clubs, and they're just kind of giant brutes. I'm sure there's more to it than that, but but when you look at the models for the frost giants in 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 D and D, they they have what looks to be their own unique armor, unique helmets, kind of like Norse inspired, a little bit of a Viking inspired, a little bit of Skyrim in there and yeah they have their own weaponry it's not just like clubs and stuff like that and they look really cool they're blue skinned and they have white beards and white hair they look pretty neat so I was thinking I might do something like that for this guy maybe we'll keep the red beard so we'll kind of have that like look of, uh, of the blue skin or the bluish hued skin uh, set against his fiery red beard I don't know something like that but um, this guy does have a bit more of a, I don't know what you want to call it, like a, a brutish appearance. He doesn't have any of that kind of like nicer armor that you might see on a frost giant. But nevertheless, I think that might be kind of a fun and different color scheme than, than just the regular old uh, Por Porkimos from, from Magic the Gathering. Since I don't necessarily have any personal connection to the to the actual character or or anything like that, I feel free to just do whatever I want, you know. 
that's always kind of fun to just freely paint whatever you want to do. So the other thing that I wanted to mention about this character was that I was I was looking at this guy last night and uh, just looking at the flash lines and stuff and I, I kind of got curious about the primer. So these models, uh, a lot of the, pretty much all of the WizKids pre-primed models. Let's just set this guy down and get my pointer. A lot of the WizKids pre-primed models are, uh, yeah, so they're, they're primed, right, obviously. And as is this one, so you don't have to go and spray prime it before painting it. You can go straight to painting, which is good. However, I'm the sort of person that would probably rather prefer to do it myself and prime it. And I, and I was looking at some of these details and I was just so curious as to how much detail are we missing because they've, they've done a very heavy handed job with the primering. Do you know what I mean? I was like, hmm, some of these details, could they be even more crisp and defined if I took away this initial primer coating? So I did a bit of research and, and uh, there is a, someone on YouTube, I, I'll try and get the link and throw it down in the, in the description or whatever uh, so you guys can look into it more. But um, yeah, it is a thing. People have done that before. And it sounds like with some of the older WizKids pre-primed miniatures from the Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures range, the D&D stuff, it sounds like a lot of the miniatures back then were heavily primed, like very heavy handed and a lot of detail was lost. There was a lot of clumping and, and whatever, but in recent years, and this is representative of a more recent model, it's like 2020, 2021, uh, they've gotten a whole lot better with that. And so you're not going to be missing a lot of that detail. Uh, the primering and stuff like that has gotten a whole lot better. But nevertheless, I was still very curious as to, as to how much detail would, was I possibly missing out on from this model. So I did some investigation last night like a madman <laughs> in the dark of night I took some uh, I took some alcohol and gave just this axe a bath and I figured it, I could run the risk of of this kind of getting a bit messed up in the in the alcohol bath uh, because it's because it's a, a organic object it's you know it's some stone and well organic's not the right word but it's not like it's just stone and wood so you know if something kind of got messed up during the process of of stripping this of its primer coating it would be kind of okay because i'm not like it's not like a face that's gonna melt it's just uh you know it's just the axe right so i dunked this in a bit of uh, alcohol 50 50 alcohol and water started scrubbing away with a brush and the primer came off pretty nicely and this actually is the bare plastic it's it might be hard to tell because it is kind of like the same slightly the same color tone the same kind of hue as of a whitish gray plastic as the primer but it is the bare plastic i've gotten there's still a bit of um there's still a bit of gunking up of the primer in some of the crevices but that's fine and in my investigation it seems like the the detail was fine like the primering job was fine and we weren't missing out on a lot of a, a lot of hidden detail because what you see here here in the bare plastic is more or less the same uh, when it was primed so that's good I will definitely so so therefore this entire model doesn't need to be stripped because the primer job is fine and if you're wondering why that's important like a thick a thick primering job just means that you're losing out on so much more detail right and and remember we're going to be putting many many more layers of paint onto this model subsequent layers another layer of primer most likely a dark a lighter dark primer layer and then you know the base coat of paint and then highlights and shading and all of that stuff and, and all of that builds up sure it's not like a gigantic buildup of, of, of paint you know we're doing with we're dealing with like micro 
you know, like microscopic levels of, uh, of layers. Well, maybe not that small, but, but nevertheless, I, I, was, I was very curious and, and I'm happy to report that the, that the primering seems to be pretty decent. The other part here, actually, was this loincloth. I ended up stripping uh, some, of the, some of the paint here from this area in here because again I was just very curious how much detail was I potentially losing out on uh, from a from possibly a very thick from a thick uh, primer job so again just with the brush and some uh, some alcohol just did some hard scrubbing even used a sponge like a rough the rough side of a sponge and really got in there uh, got down to what I believe is the bare plastic and it, again, it, it actually seems fine. So I was initially thinking that that it was really getting clumped up with a thick primer. Uh, the detail, I, was, I thought it almost looked like if you were to take like a hot glue gun and just start like making the details with a hot glue gun, it almost looked like that. And I was like, is that really the bare plastic? Like, is that how it, it, it's intended to look? And indeed it is because we've gotten down to the plastic and it does it does just look like that. So for this part here, I actually might go in go in with some green stuff. The uh the stuff that like Games Workshop uses the sculptors and many other miniature sculptors use to sculpt their miniatures. I might go in and kind of re-sculpt some of this stuff to look a little nicer, I think. Uh, not like I'm an expert in sculpting at all, but I feel like I can kind of make this a little more refined, make it look a little more how I like. I would, I might like it. Just this, uh, just this part here. Everything else looks looks pretty great. And as I said, I, I'm not going to need to to do anything too drastic in terms of uh, stripping the entire model because it looks fine. Then, and, and you can actually see, uh, I can see. It's probably hard to pick up on camera, but yeah, you can see that that the skin has this texture to it and and wrinkles that kind of come and become more uh, defined on the knee and kind of fade out in detail all of that is actually quite nice for this model there's some scratches of leather like to represent really worn out and cracked leather so yeah I would say that the the detail of the primer job is is pretty good for this model and uh and yeah I'm looking forward to painting it very cool dude or Borgimos. So yeah, set that guy aside. Just a little, just a little, uh, little preview chat of of the initial investigation process before we really start getting into painting this model. Uh, have any of you guys painted a a WizKids model before? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Gotta gotta appease the almighty algorithm. All right, that's enough for that. Thanks for watching.